We're going to create the U-joint assembly by starting with the bracket, two yokes, and the spider. The first thing we have done was ground the bracket into the assembly so as we added new parts it won't move. The next step will be to place a rotational joint between the bracket and each yoke and then finally a rotational joint between both yokes and the spider. So now we will create our first joint which is going to be between the yoke and the bracket. We select the edge between the flat on the yoke and the pin and the corresponding edge on the bottom of the top part of the bracket. The yoke then moves into position and rotates showing that the joint has been created successfully. Now let's move on to the lower yoke. We repeat the operation. We select that edge between the flat and the pin and then we select the corresponding edge on the angled portion of the bracket. But look what happens. It seems that the joint was made of the part came in upside down. We can use the flip component command, which will then place the yoke in the proper position with respect to the bracket. By wiggling the components, we can see that the rotation joint is created correctly. Now we can move on to creating the joint between the spider and the yokes. So the first thing, let's turn off the bottom yoke so that we get better visibility. To create this joint, select the edge between the pin and the face on the spider, and then the corresponding edge on the yoke. Notice that the two faces are flush. To take care of this, we're going to add a gap between those two faces. In this case, it's going to be negative 0.125 inches. So now let's repeat that operation for the lower yoke of the spider. Select the edge between the pin and the face. Select the corresponding edge on the lower yoke. And then give it the gap so that the spider is located within the middle of the yoke. Wiggle the yoke to make sure the joint was made correctly. And now we're going to turn the upper yoke on so that we can visualize the entire U joint and test it. We can now test our joints by using the drive function. We will set the lower limit to zero degrees and the upper limit to 540 degrees so we can visualize the rotation through one and a half turns. We have successfully created our assembly using joints to constrain motion. So why didn't this work during class? It's because I was using the wrong gap distance. If you can remember back to class, I had selected 0.121 inches as a distance between the face on the spider and the face on the yoke. So the width across the flats of the spider is 0.75 inches. And the width of the opening in the yoke is one inch, which leaves a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch on both sides. So the difference between that 0.125 inches that we used today and the 0.121 inches that we used in class caused enough of a misalignment that the joints would fail.